Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be tackling this set of stairs that I first fixed. If you want to see me first fix this stairs, it's in two parts, you can check it out here. Uh, the time has come now, this job, I'll just flip the camera around, uh, this job is all uh, skimmed out, plastered now, so sort of moving towards the second fix phase. Uh, Tyler's obviously made a start in the bathroom, so uh, yeah, we're going to start second fixing this stairs out. Now as I mentioned in the Earlier videos when I was first fixing, what I've done uh, is I'm not a big fan on aprons, nor is uh, the customers or the builders I work for. So what you can see here, look, this apron's been plastered in nicely, so you've got a nice, lovely line all the way down the stairwell there. Uh, the same on this side. So what I'm going to do, you can just see I've got these uh, capping pieces, floor capping pieces here. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to set myself up a little sort of jig so I can get an accurate line to cut along here and I'll cut that with my multi-tool and then that will fit nicely because uh, I've set this out earlier and you can see that in another little video that I did. Um, you can see there's a groove there so this will sit nicely in that groove. We'll do the same both sides. Once we get those floor cappings on here, we can then look at cutting half newel in here and also do the same here, another half newel in here. What we've got is a slight handrail return. The handrail uh, returns on a mitre here and goes into the half newel on this side. And I've just got here to explain that a bit better. Yeah, this has got a, a slight mitre on the handrail and then it returns down that uh, to a half newel on, on that wall there. Uh, this one, obviously, because it's got another newel on, is just a straight um, handrail into a half newel there. So, um, yeah, so let's get some stuff set up. Um, I've got to have to have my lights on today because. Um, we're sort of, it's autumn, the clocks have changed here in the UK, so it's a little bit dark in the morning, and there's no power on this job, unfortunately, so I'm having to run all this lot off a little journey, but anyway, that's not the end of the world, so yeah, uh, let's get some, let's get some bits of kit uh, out, and let's get, let's get going. So as I said, first job I've got to do is cut this plasterboard down, what I've done is just quickly knock myself up a quick sort of marking jig, uh, I just trenched this out, I've got the table saw out, uh, this bit of timber here, is exactly the same thickness as uh, this this section from the top of this nosing down to the groove so that uh, if you can just see if I put there that flush there you can see it's exactly the same size so what I can do now is uh, I can just lay this uh, marking gauge what we want to call it on the floor like that and I can run my pencil all the way along the line there and then I know that it's going to be cutting in exactly the right place so that the plasterboard sits up perfectly in that groove. It only takes a couple of moments to make something like that but it's going to make marking out really really easy and of course it, it makes this mark that I put here is always relative to the floor which is what we want for this nosing so I'll mark that and we can cut that. Right let's get this marked, sorry for the noise in the background that's a Jenny 2022 now it's cheaper to run the Get your electric for the generator that used to plug it in the in the wall. <laughs> right, let's mark this nice sharp pencil. Here we go. Okay. A little rough bit there. Sail over that. Pencil, it's gone. Catastrophic. Equipment fader, sharpen that up. Lead's not broken, might have dropped a few times. They get to a point where I'm sure these pencils really drop them and the lead starts to break, you can never sharpen them up. So let's have a look. Can we get back on track? So now we've got a lovely line that we know is exactly the right distance down from the floor, so when we cut it, it'll fit that nosing profile perfectly. So we'll do the same on the other side. Flip that around. See 
that. Yep, let's do that. There. Let's make sure we're clear. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Right, it's multi tool time. Let's make some noise and some mess. plaster out on the front so now when we have a look at this bit of capping that should fit nicely on there look at that almost like we planned it right the other side gets all cleaned up and we can start get this floor cap fitted So on this side, what I've got to do is cut a bit of the flooring back as well um, to get this capping in. I may well end up ripping this capping down a little bit as well because it's only got to, the floor capping's only got to go back to just underneath the spindle base rail, so it doesn't need to be as wide as that. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll get that worked out, get this cleaned out, and then we can uh, so we can get that cup in there. get this nosing cut down now so it fits in there nicely right so I've got this uh, capping cut in uh, you can see it's sort of uh, roughly fitting I've got to put a little round on the end of here uh, but uh, obviously what's happening here is this wall string is going to intersect this floor capping so what I'm going to do now is I've just although this has got a slight bow on it I've made it roughly parallel along this point and all I should do now is probably just directly sort of scribe. I know that this is a 42 degree pitch on this stairs, but what I'll probably do is just directly scribe, cut a little packer and directly scribe down uh, a mark onto this nosing so that fits perfectly uh, where it hits this string. So I'll just do that now and then hopefully um, that'll fit. That's in there lovely now. So I said all I did was set the saw over to, I said the stairs is about 42 degrees. So this is gonna be about 48 degrees. So just set the saw over to about 48 degrees and nibbled out. I did three or four, sort of nibbled a bit out, put it in to just double check, didn't take off too much. So that's quite nice down there now. Um, we've got a slight, I measured the same distance back from the plasterboard to the floorboard. So you can see we've got a bit of a bigger gap here and you can actually see here, uh, the plaster is thicker here, so it's pulling it off. So 
think we're going to have to tickle this a little bit to get that a little bit further back and I suspect it's possibly not quite as straight as I was hoping at the bottom but if I tickle this back in here a little bit um, that should make a better job of that. Unfortunately there's only so much you can do when it comes to plaster work and I know that I perhaps could have got the guys to attach a bead on here, uh, you know a stop bead but then there's no guarantee that they'll put the stop bead on straight and where I want it and trying to cut a stop bead off because it's been put on too high. Uh, I think it would just be one, one step too many to try and get the plasters to get that bead on in exactly the right place. So, uh, But anyway, no, we're looking good. Uh, nearly done this one now. Old school, just rounded that off from a block plane, finished it off with sandpaper. Not bad. Just take that sharp edge off. Lovely. Lovely, that's all ready for fitting now, so just drop that in. Beautiful. Uh, and we'll just put some, we can screw that straight down into the end of the joist and the noggings that I put in here uh, before I put the plaster on. So, uh, yes, absolutely superb. The measurement we're going to go there, I reckon. We'll go on there, on there, and on there. We'll go somewhere in the middle. As long as these uh, screws are set back far enough so that the uh, spindle capping rail doesn't catch them, they won't be seen. So. Going on now. Push it down tight, push it in. Four by fifty mil screws. Lovely. cracking that's all in and done not too worried about uh, the fact there's a little gap there you know this uh, capping as I said here look, this is the, the base capping that's gonna sit over there anyway so we don't need to worry about that uh, so yeah that's that's in look nice and neat uh, along there and also nice and high it's not bad a tiny little bit of a gap there but still not bad for a detail when that's all finished so I'll just do exactly the same on this side now. So although these stairs do come with any aprons we decided not to put a bit of plasterboard in here uh, because it would have been really fiddly for everybody so I've just fashioned a little bit of uh, capping that I had left over to make a tiny apron now. I don't think it will look odd uh, when it's all stained in, so just a tiny bit of capping to go on top of there and get one of these newels. That's in. So we've just got that last little bit of capping in there. I've pretty much relied on a DC for that, but it was really strong once it all goes off. 
So I've got a nice little corner where it comes in there. Uh, excellent. So get all this lot cleared up and start getting these newels in. Once I get the newel on, I can then start cutting the handrail in. Yeah, looking good sandwich time now.